And welcome in to this Saturday edition of the Merriman Market Analyst and Fun Astrology Financial Podcast episode. We're going to be reading the free weekly news column from MMACycles.com written by financial astrologer and market analyst Ray Merriman. I'm Thomas Miller. Thanks for joining us. We're going to jump right in. Uranus in control of these markets. You're going to want to hear what Ray has to say. First of all, a news article from the Bloomberg Evening Briefing on Thursday. The U.S. economy continued its seemingly unstoppable ascent out of the pandemic recession and its inflationary aftermath, further burying wrong calls of recession by posting fourth quarter growth numbers that crushed forecasts. The economy's main growth engine, personal spending, rose at a 2.8% rate, while business investment and housing also helped fuel the larger-than-expected advance. And then this, from Friday's Wall Street Journal, the Federal Trade Commission said it would investigate the growing arms race among the biggest technology companies to produce and commercialize artificial intelligence. End quote. Now raise commentary for this week. Typical of a strong Uranus and Aquarius cosmic force, last week witnessed breakouts to new multi-year or all-time highs in several global equity markets and possible reversals in other financial markets. On Monday, January 22nd, Japan's Nikkei index soared to its highest level since its all-time high of late 1989, but then promptly reversed and declined the rest of the week. China's Shanghai Composite and the Hang Seng of Hong Kong, on the other hand, fell to new multi-year lows on January 22nd and 23rd, and then promptly reversed and started strong rallies into the end of the week. Different directions in the same region are a sign of divergence. But which way here? In Europe, all four indices we track ended the week strong. The Netherlands' AEX exploded to 8.1896 on Friday, just slightly under its all-time high of 829.66 made in November 2021 when the 45-year Saturn-Uranus waning square occurred. The German DAX rallied to 16,987 on Friday, slightly below its all-time high of $17,003 on December 14th. The Zurich SMI had a great week too, trading to its highest mark since June 2023. The London FTSE closed well, but this was after being down hard the previous week. The United States saw all three of its major indices make new all-time highs last week, consistent with our studies of Uranus changing directions when near all-time or multi-year highs. In other words, if a market is near an all-time high or low, it could break through under Uranus. If not, look for it to make a reversal for a corrective counter-trend move. An example of a reversal from a counter-trend move may have been seen with Bitcoin and Ethereum last week. Bitcoin had dropped over 20% from its yearly high of 49,435 on January 11th to a low of 38,460 on Tuesday. Then it reversed and rallied 9.8% to Friday's high of 42,233. Is that the 16-month cycle low we've been anticipating? It is possible since we are or were looking for a 20 to 50% sell-off, but usually the decline would last more than two weeks after the high. In other markets, crude oil finally broke out of its two-month congestion pattern, rising to 78.21 on Friday. Silver showed signs of a reversal following its low on Monday at 22.04. Gold also made a slightly lower multi-week low at 2004 on Tuesday. All in all, many markets exhibited some very impressive moves following the ingress of the Sun and Pluto last week from Capricorn, the sign of the past, into Aquarius, the sign of the future and the new. So now let's see if these markets can flip the script. Now the short-term geocosmics. From CNBC.com on Friday, January 26th, a federal jury said that Donald Trump must pay E. Jean Carroll $83.3 million in compensatory and punitive damages for defaming her in statements he made as president when the writer said he had raped her in the 1990s. End quote. And this from Newsweek on Friday. The debate on whether Joe Biden should seize control of the Texas National Guard in order to force it to comply with a recent Supreme Court ruling is continuing to rage. 
Despite the ruling, Texas Governor Greg Abbott declared that Texas is currently under a quote-unquote invasion and invoked the state's constitutional right to defend and protect itself. That authority is the supreme law of the land and supersedes any federal statutes to the contrary. The Texas National Guard, the Texas Department of Public Safety, and other Texas personnel are acting on that authority, as well as state law, to secure the Texas border, Abbott said. End quote. Ray says that last week's column began with the idea that the January 20th ingress of the Sun and Pluto together over zero degrees Aquarius might represent a flip the script and power to the people narrative. And there were several flip the script events that started erupting last week. More are expected into mid-February when Mars and Venus will also cross over from Capricorn into Aquarius and conjoin with Pluto February 13th through 17th. The importance of zero degrees Aquarius was covered in detail in the forecast 2024 book and audiobook as a supercharged degree, because that's where the new era, AIRA, began on December 21st, 2020, when the 20-year cycle of Jupiter and Saturn conjoined in Aquarius for the first time in about 800 years. As stated therein, any planet, especially Pluto, crossing this degree will coincide with the themes of Jupiter and Saturn, which pertain to new laws, government policies, major court decisions, and changes in education. And we saw a lot of that last week. Of the events that just erupted and flipped the script so far, the most disconcerting may be the standoff between the federal government and the state of Texas over the huge migration of immigrants over the Texas border. Quote, an invasion that invoked the state's constitutional right to defend and protect itself, according to Newsweek's interpretation of Governor Abbott's actions. Although this pertains to the Jupiter-Saturn supercharged degree and the flip-the-script scenario described last week, it also invokes the cyclical correspondence to Neptune about to leave Pisces for Aries. The last time Neptune ingressed from Pisces into Aries on its first passage was April 12, 1861. The next day, the U.S. Civil War began. Neptune comes close to entering Aries this year, reaching 29 degrees 55 minutes of Pisces, as it stations in late June to early July 2024. The actual cross into Aries is on March 30th, 2025. Between Texas and the federal government, as well as between the extremists against Trump and or Biden, with each alleging the other of being fascists and a threat to democracy, the nation appears headed to a potentially very dangerous episode regarding its ability to function as a stable government. It's almost as bad as what is happening in today's world of astrology regarding the traditionalist versus the modern-day astrologer, or the Vedic versus the Western practitioner, or those who wish astrology to be more scientific and education-based versus those who want to return astrology back to fortune-telling. In other words, we are living in wild times, just as Pluto moving into Aquarius would suggest. And, as pointed out in the Forecast 2024 book, this trend may peak into the Aries Vortex of 2026, plus or minus one year. There is hope for humanity. We just need to be a little more patient for a little bit longer. As far as financial markets go, these major political and legal conflicts may be jolting. You may wonder why I discuss politics in this column that is related to astrology and financial markets. It is because the political landscape will affect financial markets. The economic visions of both Biden and Trump are so vastly different and will affect the different facets of the financial spectrum. People support Trump because they believe he will protect them and the nation and lead to more economic stability and growth. But people also support Biden because they believe he will protect democracy as well as lead to greater economic growth. But on the other hand, both men are getting ancient and seem to be challenged when it comes to memory and focus. This concerns the majority of Americans who truly wish for a different choice of candidates. And in order for that to happen, the script has to flip greatly in the next month. 
the transit of Pluto, plus Mercury, Venus, and Mars from Capricorn to Aquarius may be the way of the cosmos to offer this hope. The next four weeks could be wild in the field of politics, courts, and financial markets. So stay tuned. Things and the markets are not likely to happen as expected. And that concludes Ray's commentary for this week from California. We'll be in here for Level Up on Sunday night on the YouTube and podcast channels. Then back on Monday with reports from here in California and Texas next week. And then hopefully back to home base for this column next weekend. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you back on Monday.